24 Hours of Nothing But Net keeps rolling along with incredible celebrities and incredible givers. And that's what I would call Jenna Cosgrove, the head coach at Rhode Island College. Jenna is a friend of Stephanie Coro, our shooter in Rhode Island. And we are so pleased to have you, Jenna, on the live stream with us here from Charleston in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. So happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me, Debbie. So tell us a little bit about your program and your team. Introduce us to Rhode Island College. I got to Rhode Island College. I was at Fordham for seven years and then came back home, took over a program that really needed to be rebuilt because it was a, it was a championship program when Stephanie Coro was there, one of the all-time leading scorers and players in the Hall of Fame. Um, and I'm very proud to say that I, it's, it's a wonderful school and we've worked really hard. And in my four years this year, we won a championship. We're getting back to where Stephanie was. So um, great school in Providence, Rhode Island, and um, just got a great group of young young women. And we just had a 11-0 season during COVID. Wow, 11-0 season. There were incredible challenges about COVID. Everyone that played basketball this year had to face them, uh, and I know that was challenging. Give us a scouting report on Stephanie Coral. We've been watching her shoot free throws during this live stream event, but give us a little bit of scout on who Stephanie is. She's so shy and humble. She doesn't say much about herself. Well, she's not shy on the court because I bring I brought back the alumni two years ago and um, Stephanie shot more threes on us. I was like, is anyone getting the clue that this kid's the best scorer and shooter in uh, school history? I mean, she's a fantastic player and her mom and her aunt and her sister, they all went through the program. Um, so they're big, you know, big part of the Rhode Island College family. But Stephanie was uh, sec ranked second in school history with fit over 1,500 points. She was fresh rookie of the year. Uh, she was a four-time all-conference and all New England selection. But she also recently got inducted to our Hall of Fame. But I'm talking lights out shooters. So I'm Stephanie is somebody I'm always in touch with, and I want her to come back and teach our kids to shoot like she did. So, yeah. <laughs> That's the kind of shooters we want, Jenna, representing 24 hours of nothing but net. We want, uh, you know, shoot till your arm falls off is what I like to say. I'm sure you've heard me say that before. <laughs> um, you're – involvement in Special Olympics. Uh, tell us about your involvement in, and why you think it's important to involve your team. Yeah, I mean, Special Olympics strives to create um, a world where it can foster the acceptance of everybody and anyone with intellectual disabilities can really find their sense of belonging, but discover their skills, their abilities, um, their competitive nature. And I think it's fantastic. I I'm really close to Ryan Fleming. Ryan Fleming is our manager. He's been our team manager for three years. And Ryan is the face of Special Olympics, really in Rhode Island. Um, and most recently, I just actually wrote him a letter of recommendation to be involved as an athlete coach for the basketball team in Orlando next summer, 2022, to represent Rhode Island in the, U, um, the, the USA Olympic Games, Special Olympics. So, um, you know, and I... He, he doesn't do basketball in the Special Olympics. He does golf, and he could tell you more golf. Um, I think it's swimming and bowling. But to see him and how comfortable over the last couple of years he's gotten with our program, he is the energy of Rick Woman's basketball, without a doubt. Um, and he has found his confidence. He has found his voice. And to see him excel is one of the shining bright spots of our, our program. My son, Frankie's a manager for the Clemson women's basketball team for Amanda Butler. And, and Amanda talks about his uh, endless energy. And when she's trying to be serious, sometimes he might be over there dancing. I'm sure you've had a couple of good stories. Frankie loves to tell the refs not to call any fouls on Clemson. So he'll do that frequently during timeout. So he's, he's quite the diplomat over there on the end of the bench trying to help Clemson get a win. Does Ryan have any funny stories in game or anything oh. that's happened? Uh, with him sitting on the bench or in practice with your program? Oh, 100%. Ryan is, Ryan provides the laughter when the laughter is needed in a practice. He will bang on that horn to get everyone's attention. And then when, when he hears me getting on him for not running hard or not giving enough effort, he'll jump on the line and out sprint them all. So he, he knows how to rile them up. I remember in a game, a uh, coach came up to me and said, what are your kids on right now? They are on a different level of energy. They are so loud. I go, I look, I looked at her. I go, you see that kid right there? Ryan, he is, he riles them up. We really missed him this year. He, uh, just cause of COVID it was difficult. And, you know, just his parents weren't, didn't want him to, um, sure. you know, to get sick and bring it home. Um, 
but you know, I was telling someone the other day, Ryan always sees the positives and makes light of it. You know, it is a game, obviously we're all competitors, but there's times where we lose in a close game or an overtime and he sees my face and, and he comes right over to me. He goes, coach, it's okay. We played well. It's just a game. And, you know, I want, sometimes I want to be like, Ryan, come on, give me a minute. <laughs> but you know, it is. And it's, it's just, that gives you perspective. Um, he's so positive and probably one of my favorite things about Ryan and I'll tell him out, this will be with my heart forever is we won the championship this year. And he had his phone up, watching it on the big screen at home. And the genuine sincerity, love, and passion he expressed in that video, I could cry every time I watch it. So it's, I could go on for days, but he, you know, he'll dance. He'll do things that just, when you need a laugh, you get the laugh. But he will also provide every motivational thought and inspiration to our team when it's needed. I know you, you talk about Ryan's presence and his incredible positive attitude and, um, you know, the lack of a filter, if you will, sometimes I just know with my own son that sometimes they just say things uh, that he may have heard you say, or I know in Frankie's case, you may have heard Coach Butler say, and um, he repeats it, but he doesn't have the filter or the, the sensitivity to, to, to deliver it maybe in a way that you might want it delivered. Um, and, and, I, and I understand that there are a lot of people uh, across the country now that are trying to draw inspiration from people like Ryan and like Frankie. But there are times when also it's not that they're an object of inspiration, that they are people that really get it and understand that, you know, times can be tough or there could be some adversity on the court. But Ryan has a way of bringing the perspective back, I'm sure. How has that helped off the floor with your players? I mean, it, 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 he sets the example every day because he brings that passion, just like what you said. Sometimes, you know, sometimes he, it's like I've got this two of me because I'll say something and Ryan says it, but it's because he's so bought in. And I think that's one of the biggest things that my kids see in the incoming freshman see that here's a young man that is so bought in to everything we're doing. And he is trying to, almost as like a leader and a captain, just set the standards. Um, and it's just, you, you don't see the negatives in Ryan. You don't see him having a bad day. Um, and that's stuff we talk about, you know, your body language and things like that. And I can't tell you that I've ever seen Ryan have a bad day or, or ever not bring his max energy. Uh, and it's truly, I mean, when he's not in the gym, our players feel it. They feel it. There are going to be times during this 24 hours where you're going to be out there shooting or you're going to be out there helping Stephanie in some way. And I can tell you, uh, I'm quite a bit older than Stephanie, but I do know when the grind hits that uh, you got to rely on all that training and that mental toughness to try to get you through. What will be some uh, words of advice that you will offer to Stephanie in the midst of this incredible task? And it is a marathon, but to, to complete the task of 2,400 free throws. Just to dig deep and, uh, and keep thinking of Ryan and all, everyone else to make a difference. I mean, it's making a huge difference being a part of Special Olympics and everything that it provides and will hopefully and will keep growing um, to, to, you know, to Frankie, to Ryan and to everybody else. But just to know that we have our whole team is behind her um, and, you know, we've got the whole state of Rhode Island, you know, hopefully a lot of people. Stephanie's a big name in basketball in Rhode Island. Um, and we're all behind her through it all. Jenna, we can't thank you enough for taking time out of your schedule to be with us on the 24 hour live stream. We're so excited about following uh, the progress of Rhode Island and Stephanie Coro along the way. We're so thankful that you guys have joined as partners with us. Eventually, we're going to have a shooter in every state or that's the goal. And uh, I can't thank you enough for your willingness to jump in and, and to be a participant in this entire uh, undertaking. So happy to be a part of it and happy to help in any way.